Ladies and gentlemen, seekers of truth and knowledge, welcome to a one-of-a-kind experience that will take you on a captivating journey beyond our world. Today, we have a special treat for you as we sit down with the renowned Andromedan contactee, Alex Collier. Prepare yourself for a rapid-fire question and answer session that delves into the depths of cosmic wisdom and unveils the mysteries of the universe. As always, please remember to like this video and share it with your friends and family. That way, it gets seen by more truth seekers. So, without further ado, here are today's rapid-fire questions and answers. Alex, you mentioned in a previous webinar that souls will no longer be reincarnated. Does that mean this is our last life in a physical body for everyone? That's from Michelle Chow. I have been told that if you choose not to come back, that's exactly right. You do not have to come back. You will not be recycled back into third density. You're free to go. You're free to leave. You have to click your heels three times and just say, I want to go home, I want to go home, I want to go home. And apparently off you go. It's a simple answer. There's nothing more to it than that. Except you don't have to wear ruby slippers. And you probably don't have to click the heels. <laughs> no, I was being dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a meme. What, if anything, have they always told you, always told you about the nature of the Akash or the Akashic records? Are they in any way stored within crystalline multidimensional caverns in the earth, as I believe Cryon has suggested? Or is it a permanent non-local spiritual record in the universe or the mind of the creator which records every experience of every soul in every lifetime? You hit it right there. Um, as far as the planet herself, she retains memory of all things. The oceans, the water, retains memory of all things including the memories of different species that are long, long extinct, that were here for a short period of time, that were experimental. The water holds all the memory. The spiritual body of the planet also holds the memory. Your soul holds the memory of everything that you have ever been, you are now and will ever be. That's the imprint of your soul when it hits the DNA and takes claim to a physical form, whether it's human or not. Everything has DNA. And your spiritual body, as it, as it embodies itself in physical form, also lays down your Akashic record. So it's everywhere. The Akashic record is everywhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be in anything physical. Okay, DNA technically doesn't start out as physical. It starts out as a spiritual frequency, as a vibration, a holograph, which then comes down into the physical. I think that's how you should look at it. The universe is a remarkable place. You are absolutely more remarkable than the universe. Remember, you as a soul came from outside the universe. So there's more to you than just this universe. Won't that be fun? Won't that be fun?
my intuition tells me that there are three paths we can choose to walk on in these final days. One, the dark one, which is going to put everyone who participates under dark slavery, complete control, dark technology. Two, a white path, which is benevolent, but still fully controlling good slavery. And three, a natural path, which is the real way of getting back into free life, tribal way of living together, no technology. What is your thoughts on this? Thank you so much as always. Uh, three. I think it's going to be three. I don't see it being anything else because we have to be in line alignment with the frequency of the galaxy, of the universe. And that's number three, door number three. Natural, holistic community living in the vibration and frequency and the flow of the universe. That's where all the other benevolent civilizations are. They're already there. And why would they not help us to achieve that for ourselves? Especially when we have so much to consider. Um, and all of the investment of energy, time, and resources, having to come back in time and create a new timeline that is beneficial and benevolent for all living uh, species in our solar system. <clears throat> it's door number three, end of story. It's just, we're going through the steps to get there. And Part of the steps that are left is shedding the regressive element off of us, away from us. And at the same time, we ourselves as a species have got to shed our belief systems regarding <clears throat> this way of life, this type of thinking as well. You know, the name warrior didn't mean someone who just took a life. It meant someone who would not only defend themselves, but believe in themselves and know themselves and would defend others from any harm whatsoever. It primarily meant not being afraid to be who you are. It didn't mean destruction at all. But when necessary, you throw down. When it was truly necessary, you would be able to throw down. When it wasn't necessary, you didn't. <clears throat> There's a big difference. A big, big difference. I'm curious about, curious about this. The Andromedans see us as genetic royalty, you said. Is this genetic royalty in our physical bodies or in our souls and spirit? Also, regarding the fact that we only have two strands of DNA, but came from DNA with up to 12 strands, is this DNA only found in humanity's physical bodies or do our souls contribute to our DNA? The souls contribute to the DNA, absolutely. <clears throat> there are latent in our bodies, uh, I'm aware of at least six strands that haven't been, there's four that have not been turned on, but they're latent. And they have found them inside other, our, our active strands of DNA. They just haven't made a big deal about telling you about that, but they have found other strands of DNA inside our DNA. They're just not active but they exist. They are physically there. And I think I've shared that with you a year ago, two years ago. It's hard to remember. <clears throat> so G 
genetic royalty would mean the physical. The fact that your soul comes from creator, from isness, from the great spirit, the all that is, you're already royalty. <laughs> you're already royalty. So you're good. You're good. But when it comes to the coin of the realm, which is DNA, physical DNA, um, we have the ability to adapt to virtually any physicality, any physical ecosystem. Not everyone, but virtually everyone. We have the ability to adapt to it, which would make us genetic royalty. Because it's one thing to create a life form, it's another one to have soul connect and merge with it. That doesn't always happen. And it should never be taken for granted that it does because it doesn't. When you have those two elements, physical and soul, together, you've got something. You've got something very, very special. And that doesn't exist everywhere. No, it doesn't. In fact, we have, we have humanoids on this planet who look like us, but there's no soul there whatsoever. They're running on a microprocessor. And... Um, <clears throat> They're beings that don't experience any compassion whatsoever. And shit happens. And uh, that's been going on on this planet. Very prevalently since the, since the late, late 60s. Where there have been a lot of experimentations with those type of, of uh, clones, for lack of a better word. And uh, we have the Nazis to thank for that. Uh, there were many of those type of scientists teaching that kind of shit at the Dulce base in New Mexico and other dumbs around the world. Uh, and this was technology that they learned from the reptilian races. So, you know, there's a lot of history that's going to be coming up. And we're going to be educated on much of it. I don't know if it's going to be all of it. I don't know. I, I, I just don't know how much humanity is going to be able to absorb. It may take 100 years for all of it to roll out. It may take another five years to actually sort all this stuff out, good guys and bad guys. That doesn't mean that this is going to drag out five years. That's not what I mean. I, I think the shift is eminent, literally is eminent. But there is going to be some cleanup uh, on some aisles here in some underground facilities still on the planet. Uh, there, are, there are groups that are running and hiding. And uh, they're being chased and they're being driven into a very specific place where they can be captured. It's just going to take a while. And that's all I can say at this point. There's a lot of talk going around about a dome around the Earth. Can we leave this planet by means of a rocket or through portals only? Thanks, as always. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yes, our Space Force can travel. You know... 
I don't get the flat earthers. I just flat don't get it. Um, <clears throat> but okay, that's fine, whatever. If you believe super soldiers and we have bases on the moon, then clearly we can leave the earth. If you can believe we have super soldiers and bases on Mars, then clearly we can leave the earth. If we're in communication with beings on Venus, clearly we can leave the earth. If you're aware of the Council of Five on Saturn and negotiations and things that deliberations that are going on regarding all of that, then clearly we can leave the earth. If we're being trafficked to other space races and sold as a commodity, then clearly we can leave the earth. If we're negotiating trade with all of these different races for food, technology, water, whatever it is, then clearly we can leave the earth. If the planet was seeded by extraterrestrials bringing different life forms here and seeding them not only on the planet but in the oceans, clearly we can leave the earth. That's your answer from me. Okay? That's your answer from me. Is there a quarantine? Yes, there is. But that is not what your question was. Did the United States of America go to the moon? Yes, we did. It may not have been the Apollo missions. It was other type of aircraft, spacecraft. But we were there and we are there. And we have facilities on the far side of the moon. We absolutely do. They just can't say it. <laughs> they just can't say it. You know, some of the old security NDAs, classifications, they're under the penalty of death. Most people don't know that. Penalty of death. People take that shit very, very seriously. So I just, you know, I saw the thing with uh, the astronaut Young. He was terrified to answer the question. Okay. Has the United States military been to the moon? The answer is yes. Equivocally, yes. Hell, there's Vostok rockets on the moon that the Russians sent. They had their own cosmospheres. They've been to the moon. You just don't hear anything about it. The answer is yes. Yes. I hear many saying that we will be passing through 4D briefly or only visiting for a while, like in Monopoly when you're just visiting jail, before moving into 5D. Is this because we have been delayed by the regressive elements? and that by writing the terrible wrong, that means getting us to where we should have been with expediency? Do we need to first stabilize and learn necessary lessons in 4D in order to raise up? And will some choose to stay in 4D? Good question. And that's an excellent place to probably end this. <clears throat> As we move into four, the planet's goal is fifth density. That's where she wants to go. The place is already, the, there's a placeholder there for her already. As we move into fourth, what's a, a short amount of time? Times are relevant, actually, at that point. There will be a majority of the people on this planet now who will stay in fourth and continue to evolve. And then at some point, they will move to fifth. There are several large soul groups 
of beings who are here on earth that will be transitioning with her to fourth and then to fifth. Very specific soul groups that have come here specifically to help her migrate through fourth into fifth. That was the deal. That was the commitment. That was the promise. And so it shall be done. And so it shall be done. But not everybody will go to fifth. They will choose to stay in fourth. For numerous reasons. One, they're, they're not ready. Uh, two, they want more time in the type of physicality that fourth will give them. It'll be somewhat similar to what we have here in third. <clears throat> Some want to continue to experience a bit of duality before you get to fifth. I understand that. The physical pleasures of, of fourth density are in some ways very similar to third, but more enhanced. Um, in other words, the gratification scale is higher than you would have here. It's different, but that is something that everyone will experience in their own way. The expansion of a physical life is greater in fourth density than it is here in third. Significantly, actually, it'll be hundreds and hundreds of years as opposed to 70, 75 years, 80 years, whatever it is. There will be a lot of reasons for people to not want to go to fifth just yet. But, you know, the universe decides that itself. Uh, those soul groups that are here helping the earth get to fifth will be those beings who fell back in time from fifth, from sixth, from seventh, through from ninth, or eleventh, who specifically chose to be on this ride of taking a planet from third to fifth density. Um, not everybody is on that exact same ride. It's not right or it's not wrong. It was just a decision, a choice to participate on that journey. Hi, Alex. Last time you mentioned something about huge betrayal. Are you at liberty to tell us more about that or to give us some clues? Thank you, Linda in Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Well, you're seeing the betrayal. You're experiencing the betrayal right now um, on an economic level, on a spiritual level, on a physical level, on a governmental level. The structures that were created to serve humanity have enslaved humanity. And that's the betrayal. That's the betrayal. Um, you know, in order for a civilization to be free, one has to hold the structures it creates to serve humanity accountable. When you do not, <clears throat> what you end up with is tyranny and enslavement. Humanity is going to get this lesson. They're already getting it now. There's probably enough people who are awake to this to shift this, this consciousness. When we know for sure that the domino has fallen in humanity's favor, 
<clears throat> you will begin to see the, the full rolling back of the tyranny. And those beings who operated and manipulated those structures being held accountable. And then you will see humanity approach all of the problems of the world in a completely different way, in a holistic way. And we are not going to be creating these same type of structures ever again. That's how you know we've turned the page. And literally that is right in front of us. <clears throat> as, there's, seconds. as there's disclosure, humanity will begin to see things in a completely different way and will be building a completely different homogenized operational structure for humanity. One that re not only responds to humanity, but is totally accountable to humanity. Humanity is supposed to be in charge, not the other way around. My question is regarding the humans living on Earth right now who have no souls. I'm assuming this does not mean they're evil or bad. Are they here on Earth for a different reason than we are? Is there a way to tell which humans living among us are without a soul? Yes, there is a way. And uh, essentially, they don't have an auric field, a <clears throat> physical body auric field. What you'll see is bit what would be considered a bit of a halo here. And that is just the uh, ELF waves being put out from the microprocessor that's in their brain. Uh, they're also lousy dancers, just 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 so you know, because they ain't they ain't got the jive, they ain't got the groove. Okay. What's going to happen to them? I have no idea. Now, um, <clears throat> I have heard it said that that Watkins will come in and take over those bodies. I don't think so. Um, these are clones. These are created. And these are created versions of humanity, and they weren't created to carry soul. They were usually created to fill a space or to <clears throat> um, implement an agenda. Don't be surprised if years from now we find out that many of the mass killings that are not false flags are actually clones and because of the, the lack of soul then what you have is you have a complete lack of empathy as well so don't be surprised if that's what we find out in that um, just just don't be surprised there you have it fellow truth seekers an enlightening and exhilarating rapid-fire question and answer session with the remarkable Alex Collier, sharing his profound encounters with the benevolent Andromedan extraterrestrial beings. As we continue on our cosmic journey, let us embrace the wisdom of the Andromedans and carry their message of love, unity, and compassion with us. Together, we can create a world where humanity stands united, ready to embrace the wonders that await us in the vast expanse of the universe. If you found this rapid fire question and answer session fascinating, don't forget to hit that like button and share this video with your friends and family. Subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on more captivating content like this. Thank you for joining us on this incredible adventure. Until next time, may the stars guide you on your path of enlightenment and exploration, and remember to always seek knowledge and stay curious. If you would like to see Andromedan contact the Alex Collier live via video stream, we host an online seminar three times a month on a Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. For more information and dates of upcoming online seminars, please visit alexcollier.org. Please click on one of the above videos to seek more of Alex Collier's knowledge.